what the point of this panel is, but if anybody has any questions about comics or drinking, they are recording in comics. Let's get, let's get back to Four Locos. Or, oh, yeah. I heard, yes, I heard, I heard, I heard a great Four Loco story a couple weeks ago involving you two. Four, so, okay, the Four so, Loco story is from last year's Ace. So last year, uh, Shannon came in and uh, they, had out, they had just outlawed Four Loco. And is everybody familiar with Four Loco? Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, like I am a, not. I am it's foreign. It's like an energy drink with uh, a lot of alcohol in yeah, it. Yeah, with absurd, so, yeah, absurd amounts. Of it's like liquid so people would, would drink it, and then they would be up and, up and about, but they'd be, be sort of like blackout drunk. Um, so I saw some at the grocery store, and I had to buy one because it had been outlawed. Um, so and He's an outlaw. We've established that. So Shannon came into town, and then we all were out drinking and carousing. It all comes, yeah, back on me. Yeah. And then we went, and then we went back to my place, and we, and I, I remembered I had this four loco, so we drank that, and it's horrible. Watermelon, watermelon four it, it loco. Tastes like, oh, that's my favorite flavor. It tastes kind of like a, a little like a, a Jolly Rancher, yeah. only not as good as a Jolly Rancher. Yeah. It was being served to us in sake cups. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but the, I, I don't remember much after that. But yeah. I do remember that... Uh, we have some really good pictures. Had a horrible, horrible next day at the convention. It was... Uh, it was I was very hungover, so... It ate our stomachs alive. Yeah. Well, it's not, so, it's not a good... Let's get some Four Locos. Well, we'd also had a half a <laughs> bottle of scotch and I think a couple of bottles of tequila. That might have also been... Or that. Or that. Problem. It was a big pool party. It was a lot of fun. You guys missed out. But just check it out on Facebook. There. Do we have questions? A couple of you strike me as beer snobs. Do any of you homebrew? Not yet. Not Too much yet. trouble. No. Yeah. I, I There's would. no way that I could possibly make a better beer than a person who actually beers, brews it for a living. You'd be surprised. They, they sell the ingredients to make clothes of your favorite beers. Hmm. I know people that make beers. This panel just I, ended. I, that's like too, <laughs> that's, it's too much work. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not really a beer snob. I you, like I like a nice beer, but I also like Pabst Blue Ribbon. Yeah, uh, people, so. I like Pabst. I like Pabst. Pabst is a good beer. Well, isn't the best thing it, about beer and not having to work for them? What? I think the best thing about beer is it gets you drunk. Yeah. yeah. And it tastes good. <laughs> One thing that I could see myself doing is like, I mean, if I had grape, grape plants, but I don't have any grape plants, but if I had grape plants, I could definitely see myself making like some wine. You, but, you, but like, you're going to make like, the best wine because you think they're called grape plants. <laughs> yeah, grape plants. They're called vines, my friend. You know, like, grape like, the old, like, the, like the old like, Italian family style where you get like the big Dimijohn and like the big glass. You know, what's it called? Jim, Jimmy John. You just you stuff it with grapes and you smash it and like you just let it sit there for like a month and that's like how Italian like families make no, it. You're just like, making up words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I believe Look it. it Jimmy John. It's like it's like a giant it's a giant flask. It's green. Isn't that kind of mustard? <laughs> Jimmy John. Are we playing drinking game? Drinking. We don't have. We don't have shots. Have enough. Yeah. Like, let's get Everyone who hasn't had a movie made option drinks a shot now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah everyone who's never had a, mo a, a book option should uh, buy a round of drinks. <laughs> Every time you get screwed by Hollywood, take a drink. In your face, Aaron. Uh, what's, what's a good drinking game to play? If we ask you a question and you can't answer it, you have to take a drink. Snap. You can't drink whenever you feel depressed. <laughs> then I would, like then I would never stop we drinking. We don't Dang. answer it correctly. Because yeah. I can answer any question you ask me, like, whether it's correct or not. Like. All, right. All right, I'll play your little game, sir. What is your, what is your question? I hadn't gotten that far with it. Come on! We'll come back to you. That is a pitiful drinking game. You just made up, sir. Ricky is wearing suspenders. He doesn't need to ask a question. He's a well dressed man. Who would win in a battle between uh, the Death Star and um, the, the Love Boat? The Love Boat. <laughs> Death Star. No, Andy. If you do that, no, if you do that, you gotta make it real. I gotta put my glasses on for this question. You have to make your own. And Unicorn. No, I got it. Death Star? 
or Battlestar Galactica. Wait, wait, the whole armada or just the ship? No, the, the Death Star. No, I mean, but like, I mean, all the Battlestar? Like all the ship, the convoys, everything, the Vipers? All yeah, everything. Like every, all the entire complement of the, the Battlestar Galactica. The, Star the whole family. The whole See? Yeah. yeah, but one single Viper. <laughs> what? I think this panel is This derailed. is going to... fight. This panel is absurd. <laughs> The love boat would definitely win. The love boat is a huge ship. We're already, we're already Death losing Star our first, so are just is a little out. tiny model about yay big. No, they come to the bottom. Oh, all right. I'll pitch you they come to the bottom. The, the yeah. love boat would definitely crush the Death Star. It's six charming lads? How could... I think the better question is what would happen if Unicron had sex with the Death Star? <laughs> I cannot answer, sir. <laughs> you stumped the panel. Sweet. With your retarded question. It's a foreign question, not retarded. It's the same thing. <laughs> with, with your specially abled question, you have stumped the panel. So how many drinks, let's say beers, does it take to get you smashed? Smashed. Um, Define smashed. I'm a whole, How much wood could a blackout drunk? I, I, oh, I'm an, I am an older gentleman, yeah. <laughs> and so consequently, it used to be that I could drink like a lot, yeah. and seemingly not get drunk. Although I probably was way drunk. <laughs> but these days, I mean, I'm I'm uh, not even through this, and I'm I'm feeling it already. So. I can drink. I usually drink a twelve pack, and then I just fall asleep. I don't see. I start. Yeah. My body has a self-regulator. Like especially with beer, if I start to drink too much, I start to get. I start to get a hangover before I fall asleep, and then I have to stop. But I used to. I used to bartend in New York City when I was in grad school, and I, I wanted to test myself on this. This very thing that you you asked, because because you know in New York. So using science. Yeah. No. When you're in New York. And you're a bartender. It's basically part of the job that you have to drink. I mean, you have to because I, I, I try like several times. Like you know what? Tonight I've, I've got to not drink because like this is getting ridiculous. And I get about an hour in and be like, these people are idiots. Like I've got to drink. Like I can't take this anymore. <laughs> like so one night, you know, we would just get wasted. And our boss was a complete asshole. So we'd always like drink like the nicest stuff that we could get off the wall. And you know, everybody had like their thing. One person was Johnny Walker Black Label. For me it was Jameson. Uh, it was either Jameson or uh, Barbon Court Rum. So one night I was like, I am going to see how much I can drink tonight and still function behind this bar. And I ended up drinking, we had this thing that we'd always do. It was a Cuban restaurant uh, slash bar. We would do this thing that, I guess it's like a Cuban tradition. I, I don't know, I could be completely wrong and racist about that. <laughs> but uh, we, we called this thing a refresho, and we'd take a beer and we'd split it between two cups and we'd slam it as, far, as fast as we could, like we were shotgunning the beer. We called it a refresho because we was like, we'd keep our buzz going. So in that night, you know, I drank like six beers. I had 16 shots of, of Jameson, Barbacourt rum, and Johnny Walker Black Label, and then I did three refreshos. And I walked home, and I woke up and I felt fine. I, if I did that now, I would be dead. I would be dead if I did that now. So. We don't recommend that. <laughs> yeah. But if it were to happen, we'd like to be yeah. there for it. I've, I've done yeah, research that, that now, teenagers are much dead, more tolerant for it. Teenagers uh, are actually all, much All measurements better. that he just described are probably... Uh, exaggerated. Exaggerated. No, they're not. They're not. They're not, they're not. <laughs> so now, Andy, is, the two beers, are they helping you with the stress? Of like trying to write the story that's due on Monday, is it is it, is it helping they, you? They uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, they are helping me. Drink. Yeah, I guess so. Drink. But it's still stressful, you know. I it's it's well, stressful because I got a lot of work to do, and I'm and I really want to have fun at this convention, and I'm I'm like. Well, you already drew it. All you have to do is write it. That's the easy part. No, I got to write it and color it and letter it. Oh. Mm, uh, we can help you at the bar tonight and yeah. tomorrow. There's a lot of crap going on here, pal. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's not just, yeah. you know, you and your little, what? You know, just, whatever, your little comics that you make. Let's just do this thing Mad Lib style. We need a noun. Or have you been, like, just oh, really no, busy no. with other projects? No, I just had other, I had basically a ton he of He was drinking. You have, a, you have a full dance card. <laughs> I do. Okay. I have more than full dance card, actually, which is... Uh, 
which is really awesome. It's an awesome problem to have, yeah. but uh, it's just I got a lot of stuff to do right now. I, I, find, so, it's, I find it amazing that you're on a panel and you're you're working. <laughs> I, I'm in I'm sort of the similar situation. Like I'm a couple weeks behind on the fourth issue of the Shadow. Why don't you have a page right here? Because it's a drawing. You slacker. Like, seriously, like like it's the convention. Like I, you just be like, you know what? Like it'll get it'll Monday. It'll you know, I'll get back to it Monday, and, and I'll do as much work as I can during the convention. But like. I guess Andy's got like a hard deadline. You know, right I used to be just like you, pal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, I mean, I, I just got a ton of stuff to do. Oh, wait, excuse me. That's for me. <laughs> oh. Please answer it on the microphone. That's actually, that's actually my uh, the guitar player for my band. He's in jail. He's in Indianapolis. <laughs> it's the same as Jack. Yeah. <laughs> it's worse than Jack. <laughs> I should have. Any questions? Yeah, we got one here. Front. Besides now, do you normally drink while you're at work? No. <laughs> uh, I do. I'll, I'll sometimes have a beer. I don't. I don't drink enough to the point where I'm like, you know. Yeah. I, like, like right now, I'm. I'm getting right to the point where I'm probably not going to be much good for drawing after after this. But uh, but I can still I, I can still chicken scratch a little bit. I'm I'm right. Witticisms. <laughs> yeah. my, my hilarity is still flowing onto the page. I, I usually, on a Friday, I'll usually start drinking. Like if yeah. It's a week I don't have my kids. I'll start drinking around two or three, four. Nah. When, the we when the weather's nice. I have a box somewhere. <laughs> I, I mean, I'll still like, work. I'll work until yeah. my page is done, but I'll, there's nothing. I can drink yeah. and work at the same time. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you drink and draw? Uh, I used to. <laughs> I used to. But these days, yeah, I try to just uh, drink coffee. Uh, so I'm drinking coffee. Mm -hmm. I'm drinking something. It's usually coffee. Yeah, the caffeine. But back in the wild days, yeah, I'm completely sober story. when I work, except for cons. <laughs> Same no, for the cons. It's a little I, 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 Doing like, work at I've, cons is different. So. For myself, I found like I mean I don't you know, I, normally I don't drink when I'm drawing because like if I especially if I get drunk like it's done I'm, I'm done like I can't work anymore. But I have found that like there's like this little sweet spot. Like if I'm just like sort of at the edge. With your refreshos? That, yeah, with the refreshos. But if I'm like right at the edge, it actually like it loosens my wrist up and I get a much more kind of fluid line. But it, it's We're just in this like really tiny area and I always lose it. I always lose it because I keep drinking and I'm like, well, it's gone. And I'm it's a too drunk to work sweet anymore. spot where you're like on the toilet right here. <laughs> yeah. There's a wrist involved. And you got the time. page right here. I think we have a question here. Yes, sir. Have you guys ever got stressed, started drinking while needing to write something, wake up the next morning, find out that you finished writing it, but have no recollection? I don't. I never black out. Awesome. No. <laughs> As a writer, I should lie and say that's I happened. Have, I have definitely yeah, had, had no recollection of doing something and realized it the next day, but it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, it was not making comics. <laughs> not actually <laughs> w waking up next to people. <laughs> I was waking up in the drunk tank. Making babies. <laughs> No, I didn't wake up in the drunk tank. I was I was not drunk. I mean, I was drunk legally, but I was no, but I, I was certainly ambulatory. I know what you're talking about. I Tell it to the Andy. judge. <laughs> I get the feeling that you are making fun of me. Do my face to this general area right here. That's your face. <laughs> so I'm going to the I'm bar. Sorry. Does anybody need anything? What's that? I'm going to the bar. Does anybody need yeah, anything? I'll, I'll take a few. Gin tonic. Bring up the bottle. Yeah, we can just yeah, yeah, do we have bottle service here? <laughs> yeah, I'll have a corona. What did you need? Uh, Using those privileges. I'll just take a Bud Light. Bud Light. <laughs> I don't think we need to do you know, that again. That was, that was just get yeah, this thing rolling. Yeah. I see people so, are still in line. So. Is the audience yeah. drinking at this uh, ridiculous uh, excuse for a panel? Yes. All right. Thank you. I got my two drink minimum. Why don't we make them bring us drinks? Yeah, why is, why is Andrew? We're here for their entertainment. Someone else bring it. Bring it. I think Andrew is actually just leaving. <laughs> yeah. He took your cash, guys. Like 50 bucks. You fell for yeah. it. I've been on he, a lot of panels with Andrew. He has had it up to here I should have thought about with that. my nonsense. <laughs> He's a clever one. This is, like, this is sort of a weird idea because, like, you know, this, this, the conversation we're having here should be, like, around a, a table in a bar. But there's, like, this, you guys should be closer. This is audience. <laughs> it's, it's so bizarre. <laughs> have you guys ever done a panel like this before? This, no, 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 no. I don't I have think not, this. We, we do something like I, this. this. Is, I think this is uncharted territory. What's happening up here? 
Yeah. I'd be nice. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Mark Millard did this type of thing at Chicago, too, that you had only 21 and older, and you had a drink inside the room while you, you talked. That's cool. And, and did it wind up in a fist fight? No. Because that's what's going to happen here. But he talked smack to everybody. He was, he I see. Kind of and where is he now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, who, who is this person you're talking about? I know. I've done a panel with him. Never again. That guy. Yeah. <laughs> gonna, gonna, Fuck that guy. At some recently, point, are we going to forget we're on we a panel to start sweat? bashing See, other professionals? I, I think this Not panel me. should be about <laughs> ranting. Uh-huh. Yeah. The, alcohol. It be, does somebody have something to yeah. rant That's about? Right. Some the grumpy old start, man panel. We're going to start bitching yeah. about how I don't have any work coming in. Like, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, Ryan. <laughs> and then when you do Tell get, us about your woes. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not that drunk yet. You're drinking beer, man. I got step it up. I think we two, two alcohols. We should write and pitch a comic okay, so on this panel. Two weeks ago, back here. I wanna, two weeks ago we were at Phoenix okay. Comic Con and we were at this party and we had free drink tickets. And so I'm so used to drinking beer, I use my free. They have like top shelf liquor and all this shit. Yeah. I use my two drink tickets on like Miller Lights. He walks in. Just mocking me, and like, making what fun. What are you Miller Light? It's free alcohol. You can eat anything you want. <laughs> He's like, I didn't think about that. <laughs> okay, I've got, I've got something. Okay, Andy, why don't, why don't we, why don't we write Andy's script for him? He looks a little stuck. I'm good. All right. I'm all right. You, I've got, I've got a story. I got a story I can talk about. about that night. <laughs> you have a question back here. Oh, where was it? Oh, it was yeah. right around that oh, area. Yeah. We don't read them. I don't. I don't read comics actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I read I'm not being. A, I'm not being like a dick. I really don't read. I usually buy like I'll, I'll buy a book that because of the artist. I'll buy like yeah, an Eric Canetti book or yeah. Uh, Thank you. you know, I'll buy like a Hellboy book. Thank you. So but I don't really read my, many comics. Yeah. I read. I actually read sorry, comics, little, but uh, oh, but, like, but I but I have a huge stack like of unread boy. comics sitting by my bed. Yeah, right are now. you guys drinking Tall Boys? Yeah, we. Oh shit! Okay. Oh, I like, I like the way you roll. But, but I, I highly recommend. Huh? Um, it's beer in Australia. Legally. It's what is what is Brian Chirilla's? What is Brian Chirilla's DB? DB Cooper. Cooper. What's it, no? What's the whole the, title? The Adventures of DB Cooper. There's something. It's like adventures. Secret Adventures. The Secret like Adventures. Adventures. Secret Adventures of DB Cooper. Awesome, awesome comic. Book. Sales just got a huge uptick. I know. He, he actually sold. <laughs> Sorry. Half a comic, right there. <laughs> <laughs> like pages one through seven, yeah. just sold them right there. Like a lot of the comics that I buy now generally are supporting friends of mine that are doing yeah. their own thing. Granted, so Shannon just told me before the show. Cronyism. That since he lives in Rhode Island, there's no comic book store, so he he hasn't been to a comic book store. Right. Is there no? There's no comic shop in the state of Rhode Island. There are record right? stores that sell some comics in the record store. But, but there's no dedicated comic shop. In I the haven't entire state. found one. That's oh, an untapped market. Wow. It is. It is. Yeah. Or there's no market for it because they don't sell. Maybe there's maybe there's no comic book readers in Rhode Island. I don't. I don't That's know capital. Didn't read there. So. <laughs> but I only read a couple. I mean, anything that like I, I'm I'm a constant Hellboy fan. I always read anything Hellboy. Though it's weird. Like I love Hellboy. Um, I can never get into BPRD. I don't know why. Uh, you are totally missing out, sir, because yeah. that is a better written comic. I know. I don't. I don't know. Maybe I'm, it is, I'm too used. It to, is incredible. I'm too used to like the the Mike Mignola style and the the Duncan Forget Forgato. I, I don't know. It's just, it, it seems like I want everything to look like that. But uh, so I, I'm one of those guys. I'm like Ryan. I, I look at the art first, and the story is kind of secondary for me. But Hellboy is one of those books where it's like it's story. It's really like that's the one thing where I really love I'm, the story. I'm with Andy here. Like BPRD just put out a couple like like two issue yeah. series, like uh, Jason Latour and yeah. uh, James Heron illustrated them. They're yeah, I mean, fantastic. eventually, I mean, I mean to get, I mean to go and like <laughs> go, girl. I'm the kind of person I've got to start at the beginning. I can't jump in at the middle. And I was out of comics for like 10 years. I didn't collect anything. So I missed the whole beginning of BPRD. And uh, so like I've got to start at the beginning. It's just start, starting to pick up those trades. I'm sure I'll get like sucked into it. But, just saying. But, it's real good. Yeah. And then anything. Anything that, that Sean Phillips does with Ed Baker. So I'm reading Fatal. Yeah. So. I read Profit from Image. That's really good. You read what? Profit from Image. That's really good. Profit? Yeah. Profit. The remake one. 
Not the one I, I worked I, on in '93. No, I picked up, I pick up the first two issues, but I'm not. Uh, I'm. I read the first one, and I haven't read the second one yet. So, you want this punch up to happen now? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. I like it. Does it start off with him walking through a valley and saying, "Yay, though I walked through the valley of death"? <laughs> no, it's it's like it's gone like French European it's very, science fiction. It's, very, um, it's, it's not good. overtly Christian anymore. It's very. Uh, no, it's nothing to do with Rob Liefeld, which is why I like it. <laughs> French. You know, Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. It, it, it looks like something that Dargod published. It's really good. Oh, okay. huh. It's pretty cool. A very heavy sci fi. And I read a comic called Monosa. Read what? Which I may or may not have contributed to, which is technically. <laughs> disregard that. Yeah, does anybody, does anybody up here like read their own books? No. Like, no. <laughs> no. Would that be weird? Like I'm, I'm reading what I'm writing. Right I have now. never <laughs> ever, I have never ever sat down and read an issue of a book I've done. I usually like, never. I've never sat there and actually I, read it. I have only because I've done a lot of my own comics, and it's usually because I always find that one looking, typo after it's printed. Look, looking for that horrible mistake that you made. But it's not reading as much as like oh, I read this 37 times to try and find all yeah. of the typos. Yeah, like, I, I, have, on page I have no two. idea like how like fans. Are consuming the work that I, I do. Like I have no, I, I don't understand. I, like I, I know how because like when you read a script, it's a completely different thing because you're you're de, you're you're deconstructing everything and figuring out like how can I take this script with these words in the description and turn it into images. And so it's like it's breaking the story up into like all these little segments, you know. And I, I I have no idea like how it's you know how it's consumed in its totality. So yeah, we don't read scripts like someone will actually normally read them. So when you read a script, you go, oh, hey, did you like that? You go, well, maybe, but I look at how you actually tell the story. Yeah, I don't, even, it's I don't a, even read the dialogue mostly when I'm Yeah, reading. I don't, yeah. yeah. How it's going to affect our job. Yeah. I hate writers don't give you dialogue with the script. It's like, no, 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 I need to know that for facial expression. So I hate, like, the Marvel method or whatever it is, where they put it in after. Like, kidding? Yeah. You know, I have learned from writing comics. Wait, wait, are you artists are the actors and directors. We have to know how to act for the fucking thing to work. Yeah. Did you have you ever have you ever worked Marvel style before? Nope. Oh, never want to. It's actually not bad. I, I mean, well, when, I, when I first started in comics, I, that's basically all I did. Does anybody know the difference in the Marvel style, DC style that they're talking about? But basically, you know, the, the it's not so much that it's just Marvel that does this anymore. But in the don't old they, days, don't they do everything the boards, everything, and then do the dialogue? Well, it just basically, it was more of a loose description for the artist. Like, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. He's angry, he's saying something yeah. to Peter Parker. J. Jonah Jameson yells back, and then Ditko would go, all right, I'm going to tweak yeah. this, and then Stan would get the art back. And then you go, all right, I'm going to come up with the dialogue now to match exactly to the art. I am actually, the, the, the story that I'm writing right now is actually being done Marvel style, even though, <laughs> even though I wrote it, and I'm drawing it, yeah. and, then, and then I'm writing it again. Yeah, so like you get, you, with Marvel Side, you get this synopsis, basically. And from the synopsis, you'd be like, turn this into 22 pages. From an artist's standpoint, it's, it, it's better to have the whole picture, like you like having the whole picture right yeah. off the bat. Yeah, yeah that doesn't, mean, that doesn't well, mean you can't change it, but it's good to know. Well, I would like to point out this is a thing. panel of artists, so what's, we're going to be... Awesome <laughs> about Marvel, what's awesome about working that, in that way is that it's totally up to you to break down the story any way you want yeah. uh, to tell the story. But what was missing, I mean, in the scripts that I got that were when I was working for Marvel, when they were still doing Marvel style, um, there would be sort of key bits of dialogue, uh, but you wouldn't get, you know, the totality of the dialogue. And so you would miss a lot of acting moments or whatever where somebody would be saying something and, and you, you would see it after the fact and you go, ah, oh, I wish I, if I'd known he was saying that, I would have had him yeah. doing something a little more like what he's saying. Yeah, that's why you don't, you don't see like in those old comics like but, the, that, just a bunch of headshots of people just standing there, like that doesn't exist. But, but so the, the, uh, the, the comic that I make with Phil Hester uh, <laughs> called Firebreather we sort of came up with a method that's kind of uh, a mesh of the two, where it's like a, uh, he kind of gives me almost like a movie script where it'll be, it'll say page one, here's what happens on the page, and then here's all the dialogue for this page. And then it's up to me to break it down into as many or as few panels as I need, but I still have all the dialogue. You know, to you know that that's how I work. Said, okay, I... What, what, what? 
You know, you know what he wants to get said on that page. Exactly. Even without it being said. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. And you want to know Correct. if somebody's like asking dialogue. a question. You know, a question is a certain that, that's a facial expression you're going to exactly. have. Exactly. Exactly. You're asking a question, or you're demanding something, or you're angry, or you know. Well, I mean, so. on, on the on the Marvel scripts that I got that were done that style, I mean, there was a ton of information there, so it wasn't like you were just totally flying blind. <laughs> now, I will say this: I did a. Uh, uh, so when I was doing that stuff for Marvel, I would get, it would be about a seven or eight page script for 22 pages of artwork. And that would be like, you know, that would be all the descriptions of all the scenes and everything. Then I did a, a Freak Force miniseries for Eric Larson and he, he sent me the script and it was done Marvel style and it was, uh, Less than a page, less than a typewritten like one page giant paragraph. for three issues. <laughs> what? <laughs> and I, I was flipping out. <laughs> because I, I was, I mean, today I could probably just go, go crazy apeshit with that. But at the time, I mean, I was... Too scared, much freedom! <laughs> scared shitless because I didn't know what to do. Uh, but like, but I did it. basically just like a big fight? There was a lot of fighting, like, yes. You know, like, a lot of, like a lot of comic books now, like especially like like an Edward Baker book. There's lots of talking heads. There's lots of you know exposition. Be, like that, there's like what no exposition because like my, oh you know what like fuck it I'm gonna put like just a page of like people talking to each other. My my you know? memory is there was there, there was some fighting going on if I remember correctly. I wish I wish I could get a script that said like pages 13 through 20 fight. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, I mean, that used to be the, the par for the course. These days, no, not no. so much. The best scripts where you get a writer that wants to actually tell you exactly how the fight goes. <laughs> because obviously they know visually how that will work for you on the fucking page. <laughs> like, oh, and he gives a left uppercut to the well, thing, and then the... his hand goes... Like, no, I'll make it look cool. They're fighting. <laughs> it's not critical to the character development that's that this guy pisser. always... Yeah, nowadays a 22-page comic is usually like a 35-page written document. Yeah, I've had that. The kind of... Sh the kind of yeah. yeah. But the first thing I ever worked on, um, the Sherlock Holmes... Okay, first of all, I'm not, I'm not trying to talk bad about anything. I worked with Leia, Leia Moore and John Rupion. They're awesome, and Leia Moore is like... Phew, Apple right off the tree of uh, Alan Moore. Um, and she writes in an Alan Moore style of scripting, which is like 22 page book, 50 page document. You know, like I could have an entire, literally, there were pages where a whole pan, like one panel was an entire page of scripted text. Down to like the fruit vendor over in the alley, you know. It's was crazy. It, was, it just, was it just like every detail? Of every it? single detail. Every like single. And that's, I mean, that's the Alan Moore way of doing it. I mean, that was cool. And here's what I'll say. For my first published book, that was really helpful because it, it took a lot of the pressure off. But once I got past that, I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> like, and then I went to Matt Wagner. Matt Wagner was like, uh, they're in an apartment, and he says this. <laughs> It's apartment-ish. That's, that's much more better. <laughs> yeah. like it really comes down to better. a personality thing. So, I mean, depending who your writer is and who the artist is, I mean, some guys like want to have tons of description and some people don't. Yeah. If you have a cool editor who lets the two of you communicate, then you, the two of you can work that out. And you can tell the writer, you know, you can tone that down. I'm going to do this. And uh, it makes their job easier. And if you need all that description, you can ask them to step it up, and hopefully they will. So... Yeah. Um, I don't know if any of you guys edited before. I took a brief foray at DC to try editing. I don't. Editing's a mixed bag, though. You, yeah, you were I, an editor. Your job was to corral and control corporate property and keep that's it what true. It, he's right. That's what my job was. Not that's what. what it, that's why they have editors. My job was. <laughs> I thought my job was going to be like Ben Templesmith. I want you to work on this project. You're fired. Ha ha ha! I'll talk to you tomorrow, Ben. This is awesome. This is just like J. Jonah Jameson <laughs> and, and Peter karate Parker. Karate chop your ass. <laughs> No, but it was mostly like that. for that. If it's create your own book, editors are what proofreaders. Yeah. Because you know you don't you know. But you for They're Batman, they've got to. You, you can't suddenly turn Batman gay and black. Yeah. Or whatever. There's rules, and the editor is there to enforce them. Yeah. And to maybe guide because I guess you deal with a lot of very newbie people as well coming up as well. So you do have to shepherd them. But you I never actually, usually work with editors. So. Yeah. Yeah. I I, 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 I left editing. Yeah. You're a lucky man. Yeah. He's never worked with an editor. He's a virgin. 
It's like this. Well, Ryan, Cody, get that stuff to me now. Ha, ha, ha. Not really. Okay, oh, I'll so talk to you later. So it's a lot like working with you. <laughs> I didn't need it until next month. You're fired. I have worked with an editor. Yeah, your, your, my, my experience your voice is too in sync with your lips when you move there. My, my, my experience with the, the, you know, my, my editor Dynamite is like, so how close are you being done? <laughs> like, that's it. The cool. only time I get any editing is when I'm doing a cover, you know? Anything else, it's like, nah, who cares? <laughs> I hate that that's bullshit because covers need to look good. I'm a designer, right? And a cover is meant to look good, create an impression on the newsstand or whatever the hell. It has a definite point to it. And then you have, I hate it when writers want to dictate what, what okay. The basic subject matter of a cover, yes. But the minute of what's on, like, no, we're making it work visually. It's a cover. Yeah. They don't write the cover. Not yeah. what they used to, maybe, but... It's changed a little, too, because, I mean, in the 90s, it was, I think, too much on the artist side and not enough on the writer. And I think it's well, swung it no the story. other way yeah. now where you've got a lot of writers that are dictating the art. And I don't think yeah. that's necessarily going very you know, smoothly. Well, I, um, I think it's like movies where the artist is technically the director, yeah. and a good artist, anyway. Yeah. So we'll ignore the shitty artists. A good artist <laughs> is a director, a DP, the actors... Everything else, except the screenwriter, who has to come up with a plot and, the, and dialogue if they're really good. Yeah. You know, the key dialogue is key. What does the writer have to really do? Because it's the artists, the artists that carry the, the heavy stuff, I think. If they're any color, good. Color gets overlooked a lot, too, on editing. Colors are artists. I think color is, is entirely, absolutely, absolutely yeah, important absolutely. part of I, I read through a lot I've of... people color my work, and it's like, what, this doesn't look like what I drew anymore. This looks like a pile of shit. Well, good colors but make some it look good a lot better. And going back to the director of photography colors, thing, that's where well, you've got... Yeah, yeah, some colors don't realize they should be backing you up. They yeah. should compliment what you right. do. They should it's work like with you. They, they like should battling against they your artwork. Yeah, do, don't do you know the trick to that? The trick to that is to do it me. yourself. Yeah, I color <laughs> almost everything. And to be an artist. They don't understand its, it's value. You know, it's like, yeah. I, I've created a space, you know, things in the foreground should be brighter, richer colors. Get your gray tones yeah. in, into the background, and yeah. you know I can imagine. I mean, I can imagine for a colorist, it's, it could be kind of soul sucking because because you're like you're you're the unheralded you know person in the background who does a lot of fucking work. I mean, really good colorists. I mean, they put probably. I mean, they can put down just as much work as like well, not just as much, but uh, they, close to just as much work as like what you know I'm doing. You know and. And, and they don't get any credit, and they don't get no. any credit. And I mean, they have no art to sell, and, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. no royalties, right? Yeah. Yeah. If, you go, if you go look yeah. at a comic from like the 90s or even the early 2000s, I always go through my long boxes, almost, and not to disparage letterers, but Colors is almost always after letterer in yeah. every credit box. Really? Yeah. In Fuck, the 90s, I hate a lot bad letterers. Letterers, too. you know, letterers, man. Letter yeah. oh, I love it when they oh put the, back, the balloon you know, like, over even your Even 10 years ago, like, lettering was like a real art form. Now it's like, oh, I'm a graphic designer, I need some extra work here. I'll just can. It's awful. I mean, there was a, there was a, a lot of good letterers. I'd like to, uh, you know, just before Aaron gets hate mail. <laughs> like John Workman. He's talking about, yes. Here's Workman how bad lettering got. Yeah. And, and with the digital shit. I won't say names or anything, but there was... Digital was, no, was, digital was new. It was nothing to do with personal people, just just corporations but so they were adapting comics to the new digital form a version of it whatever but the people that they subcontracted to to actually do put it together and it's key because it's like this panel shows that way and this panel shows that way and then like like a balloon will show up to read it and stuff so you actually need to know how to how to read a comic to actually do it they employed Basically monkeys in some third world country yeah. To yeah. Do, who had no clue about anything and it was horrible. English isn't the first language, which is right yeah. there a problem. And here, here's something that like always... You need to know how off. to tell a comment, read a comment. This is what always pisses me off is that, you know, an issue comes out and there's typos, okay? They always blame, like, I, there's been like several typos in the, in the shadow and like I'll read reviews and they're like, oh, Garth Davis doesn't know how to spell blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you realize there's a guy called a letter and he's the guy who's like writing this shit, like physically well, actually, writing I'm, it. I'm no, no, a lot no. of people and an editor. Letter is copy and paste. And, it's, and, and yeah, as an, and editor. an editor. And like, like, there's all these people like, like Garth Innes knows how to spell. Like he knows how to spell a word. <laughs> and sometimes there's just <laughs> accidents. <laughs> <laughs> that that is that word. Yeah. So who so who are uh, like your favorite people to work for? 
<laughs> with, are you talking about companies yeah, with, or, or uh, professional, I'll say, other I'll say professionals? With, um, like writers and stuff like that. Brian, Brian, Brian Clevenger is a great writer. Uh, Atomic Robo is a book he does. He does some Marvel stuff. Um, he knows how to write for an artist. He doesn't. Yeah. He writes exciting comics. They're you know they're all age comics. Everyone can get into it. Comics like when you were a kid. Yeah. Working with Matt Wagner was awesome. I mean he's an artist, so he, he writes these scripts. They're just they're, they're you know, dead on. Yeah. So I mean with Garth Ennis too. I mean, so Garth Ennis is you know I, I send stuff to Garth. I send my layouts to him, and he's like, "This looks great." And like the, any criticism he, ha criticism he has is spot on. You know so. Uh, my favorite writer to work with is uh, the guy I'm working with right now, uh, Andy Kuhn. <laughs> uh, he's writing a, a, a story that I already drew <laughs> right now as I'm talking into this microphone. I also like working with Phil Hester because he's a good guy and he's an excellent writer. He's also very talented. I hired him when I was at DC and he did some awesome stuff. Phil Hester is an extremely talented writer and he also comes from being an I'm, artist. I'm being very writer. smug, but he is an excellent writer. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm backing him up. So you got this on, on video phone. Uh, whatever this thing is. It's high tech. Sh Shannon, when you got your job, and I know I was one of these guys, when you got your, your editor job at DC, how many people emailed you asking for work? About a billion. Yeah. <laughs> people I had not heard from in a very long time. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I was born able to give out about three jobs. I worked with Warren Ellis, so I don't need to work with anyone else because I'm happy now. <laughs> the end. Oh, yeah. a great book. Thank you. He will come back eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Please? Yes. What companies do you like working for the most? Depends who is currently running the company. <laughs> you know, I mean, cause it's like anything. Like, if, the, if, you know, Patton's in charge and he's out in front of everybody going, you know, charge, I'm, I'm out there with the army, and then all the soldiers are happy, and it's kind of like that in comics. If whoever's in charge at DC or whoever's in charge at Marvel is a good guy and understands what's going on, then everybody's really happy there. And if it's somebody that doesn't really get the whole system of creatives, Oh, you mean treating people with you mean treating people with respect for their creativity? Yeah. Yes, it's a very yeah. simple old. Because school. we make them a lot of money. You know who I think is a great editor? Probably like I, I, I mean I don't know. Like everybody, I, I don't know what. Thanks, else I appreciate this. Is. But like the person I think is like a really great editor, probably one of the best editors working right now is like Shelley Bond at Vertigo. She's, what a, what an amazing person! Like I went in and Matt Wagner set me up with an interview with her. And she, I went in, met with her. She showed me all around DC offices. Like, and then I, I did some, some, some uh, House of Mystery stuff with her. I mean, she introduced me to Dan Didio, for Christ's sake. Like, and I'm sure you'll never remember who the hell I am. But, but and then she gave me some work on House of Mystery. And like, working with her, it was like, wow, what a breath of fresh air. Like, she's actually interacting with me on an intelligent level. And, and she's got like, nice things to say. Like, she's, she's, she's got, like, she really considers, like, I don't know how she does it, because she's got a ridiculous amount of books that she, she you know, edits. But at the same time, like, you know, she really, like, she really goes through and she, she takes time with each book and tries to figure out, like, what it needs and where best to work, you know, what, what best, I'm getting drunk. <laughs> but that, wait, wait, that's her job, but she's also one of those good editors that also kind of act as a curator. In a sense. She is also married like to a very that. talented yeah. artist, I think, which yeah. has allowed her yeah. a level yeah. of respect yeah. for what the creator. The only people do. who should be editors so, or in management awesome for. Creative companies right. should be creatives. Yeah. Because we're batshit insane. It was amazing so. to me, just in general, there's the, it used to be that if you were an editor, you had been an artist or you had been a writer. Or you want to be a writer. Or you want to be. But, yeah. But okay. there, now it's, there's not as much of that. It's such a, you know, and not to just completely slam on editors because it is a ton of work. I mean, it's, it's just amazing the amount of work you get thrown. Yeah. I don't know how everybody can. Artists up are flakes, it. right? We're complete flakes. Well, we, there's, it's there's horrible to deal with that. There's, there's a few. <laughs> I know, I'm horrible. I'm sorry. No, I have to say, like, Your other grandma died, died again? <laughs> <laughs> I have two. You know, one thing working about Dynamite is I have complete creative freedom. I mean, because, you know, my editor, he handles everything that Dynamite does. And Dynamite, you know, they keep growing, keep growing. They keep, you know, last year was like, we've got 100 Green Hornet titles, you know? And <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's the editor there then? You I, Who died? I, I, I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, oh, it's it's, 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 named, it's this guy named Joe Ryben. You know, I mean, you know, he's got he's got a ridiculous amount of, of stuff on his plate, and I think 
I, I don't know how he deals with the other artists. I think he has, I mean, we have a trusting relationship, so he trusts what I'm going to, you know, my judgment. So, you know, for him, you know, it's always just, you know, how much longer is it going to take? So. That's, that's what they really need to know. Yeah. If they trust you, yeah. You guys have any other questions here? We got, yeah, I'm I mean, I know we're all when rambling you guys got on. Published, was it a lucky break or did you have a system that finally worked? Uh, lucky break. There is no system. <laughs> it was a My system of persistence, but it was a lucky yeah. break. I had tried for three years to break into comics back during the image boom in the early 90s. And I finally had been like, you know what, I need to figure out what to do. I had friends in Florida. I didn't know anybody in California. So I thought, I'll go out to Florida at least in Orlando where there's a studio. Like there's Universal Studios. Maybe I'll get oh, a job. I thought you meant CrossGen, sorry. No, no, no. It was way before CrossGen. So I'm out there. Shannon's and I old. literally just drove from the West Coast to Florida, walked into a comic shop, ran into the guy at Image Comics who was in town for a convention that I didn't know about, said hi showed him what I had recently been working on. He told me, this is way better than the stuff that you've been sending me in the last three years. This is better. He's like, you know what? You're hired. He goes, can you start in LA? And I went, yes. And I turned around, went back out to my car, <laughs> drove over to my buddies, told them I wasn't going to be living with him, and I started driving back to California. And that was how I broke into comics wow. and you know, did that for a while. And then I just what happened to live down the street from the X-Men cartoon and went in there on a lark and, you know, actually got hired on the spot for that. But that was the three years of trying to get into so comics. you never had to give anyone what? a blowjob? No. <laughs> yeah. That is a crazy lucky break. To get that into that's that's the lucky break. <laughs> and also for me in the early 90s, I, I uh, had a friend in art school and he knew the guys at Gaijin Studio. And so I was going there, um, taking black and white copies of my stuff with my informa information written on the back and handed it out. And um, Coley Hamner at the time uh, had a short story for Dark Horse that he couldn't do. And um, I think he was doing um, Green Lantern Corps. And, uh, was that the mosaic time? Yeah, yeah, that's there? right. Yeah, that, that's yeah. what it was. And he's like, uh, hey, I, I can't do this story, but uh, there's this guy here, fresh out of art school, and uh, hey, he can do it. So. That, that was my lucky break, if you will. And then uh, after that, you, when, once you get your lucky break, um, meet your deadlines and hopefully get another job and keep, keep going. My, yeah, my first book was a creator-owned book and I did it at night when I was working and then no one bought it, but then it got options. So I made more money off of that than anything since. And then I was like, this shit's easy. Like, I'll just do, I'll just be like, I'll be like Doug Tenaple. I'll just do a book a year and this shit will get optioned and I'll just, whatever. <laughs> exactly. That's, 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 that's kind of awesome. what I did. That's kind of what I did. Exactly. From there. Yeah. So you took the high road. Yeah. The, the I, lucky... drew a, I drew a really poorly illustrated book <laughs> that was really well written and made more money off of it than anything I've done since. Most, most artists' lucky break is being born uh, too stupid to realize that it is impossible to get a job in comics. <laughs> and so you just keep trying and trying until you get a job. Yeah. See, I, I actually never tried. I, I wanted to be a comic book artist from the time I started collecting comics when I was like you know, 12 years old or whatever. All the way up until I got into college and none of my teachers knew anything about comics. They're like, oh, you'll, that, you'll never make any money at that. Like it's, it's, a, it's a pointless pursuit. Editorial illustration. Like it's all, true. Yeah, all of my all my professors were like editorial illustration. They're all editorial illustrators. The closest thing I could hold on to was fantasy illustration, and I was really lucky because my mic is, is my mic working. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the switch on. Is this beer on? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Um, anyway, so you know, I get into, I get into grad school and I end up hooking up with this uh, uh, fantasy illustrator. His name is now Giancola. He's, he's actually a really prolific fantasy illustrator. And, you know, I, I was like, fantasy illustration, I'm going to do book covers. That's going to be my career. I get out of grad school, and that's what I focus on. And I find out, you know, like my painting style, it takes me like four months to do painting. It's not really working. And then another friend of mine I went to, grad, I went to uh, undergrad with, we started working on, just sort of like as a lark, we started working on this, this project. And he, he was working at Diamond Comics Distributors, which is in in Baltimore, which is where I went to undergrad. And um, he, okay. it's a switch. <laughs> <laughs> they don't got them switch where he from. <laughs> Drinking, that's the point of this whole freaking thing. Cheers, buddy. <laughs> I, I, guess I, I guess I shouldn't do this. 
I guess I shouldn't do this. You should stop making out with your microphone. Yeah. So, uh, so you yeah. hooked up you hooked up with a guy. So that's the last thing we heard. <laughs> so English it's a, ended there. It's a switch. He, he was working at, at Diamond Comics Distributors, and one of his one of his uh, uh, publishers that he was working with, he was a brand manager, was Arkea, and he got uh, Mark Smiley at Arkea interested. And, he was, and, and so, you know, we showed him some work. He's like, yeah, yeah, this is cool. And we, so we signed a contract. And we actually have a contract with Arkea for this. And eventually, at some point in the distant future, this is actually going to come out. It's, it's, it's like our creator own project. And uh, so, like, the next two years I spent drawing this comic book, just in my spare time, uh, thinking basically, like, you know, I'm going to do this as a fulfill my childhood dream and then, you know, just continue on with my fantasy art career. Still, still, like, no, no intention of, of becoming, like, a full-time comic book artist. Uh, and I have another friend who I went to, to undergrad with, whose name is Phil Sablik, and he's a publisher for Top Cow. He's and, a good editor. Yeah, he's an editor. Like, he's, he's, like, the guy who runs the company, basically, for Mark Sounds for like Mark a lucky semester. break to me. Yeah, this is a lucky break. That's what I'm saying. It's a completely lucky break. So I finally finished that first issue, and I was like, I'll go to San Diego. And so I show up in San Diego and I meet up with Phil, who I haven't seen since I moved from Baltimore. And I was like, hey, Phil, I finally got the Black Knight finished, or the first issue finished. So I showed him, I was like, wow, man, this is some really good work. Like, I'll have to introduce you to some people. And then he introduced me to Nick Berucci, and three months later, I was working there full time. And, and like, like, now I'm in it, and I'm back in it. And I was like, suddenly, like, I'm back, like, I'm doing that, like, childhood thing that I wanted to, like, completely on a lark. So, so yeah, I mean, People, people come around like, how'd you get into it? And I was like, man, like, it's different for everybody. Like, and the lucky break, I don't know if you, every single one of us, are, there was some work done to get, you kind of make your yeah. lucky break. I mean, yeah. you were doing the work, we all, and yeah. then you're in the right place, and you seize the opportunity when it Yeah, presents. we always yeah. emphasize the lucky break, but, you know, I, I really portfolio. busted my ass on, on that. Yeah. It wasn't know, like portfolio. I bumped into Stanley and was like, I've never drawn before. Yeah. And he's like, you yeah. should. I'm going to give you a book. <laughs> that would be a really <laughs> lucky break. This was like we all yeah. did a whole lot of work. That eventually we found an opportunity for it yeah, to be recognized. Yeah, the, the lucky break is having a, a, a minor amount of talent. And, and then after that, it's like, you know, working hard is, is what's going to get you a job. But we there's do. some talent. But, but the lucky break for me, and I think a lot of guys, is the introduction. Yeah. yeah. But you have to have your portfolio with you. Yeah. yeah, when you have yeah. that. You got to be ready for that. Yeah, break. he could introduce me to every person in comics if I didn't have anything to show him. Be right. like, they would. It would be like, your name is. That dude's a good drinker. Yeah, we should have Aaron hang out with us. I think I can drink a gin and tonic. Like well, a lot of, this I mean, Budweiser is my lucky break. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ninety percent of it is networking, but then you have to be able to produce when yeah. when the opportunity comes. There's a lot of. I mean, there's a lot of artists I know that are better, way better than me, and they have harder time finding work than I do just because they don't take advantage or, you know, whatever. Maybe they don't market themselves enough online or yeah. whatever. But or I know some classic ones. They insist that they want to take a week on one page. Yes, yeah, they're good, but like, dude, you'll never get work. Well, you have to be, what's, what, yeah. Shannon knows this. What's that old line? You have to be good, fast, and what was the third? And then you got to be two out Quick. of the three. Good. Fast, mm. cheap. Well, that's fast. Cheap. cheap. Good. Cheap. Yes. No, cheap. not cheap. Fast. Good, yeah. fast, fast. And, and easy to work with. Yeah, good, nice. fast, and easy to work with. Nice. And you, you got to be two out of the three. Yeah. If you're nice and you're, and you're fast, people will like to work with you. If you're good right. and you're... A, and you're a dick. Well, if you you're really be really good, good. you're really you're good. Good. You're you're good. Good. a dick if you want. And yeah. you'll probably but still you be, be really good. Frank Miller to be a dick. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, there's, but there's really only one Frank Miller. But a, a wise man named Ashley Wood once told me that we spend as artists um, as much time training and getting good to even get that lucky break as a brain surgeon would studying the whole medicine and surgery to get to the point of being a brain surgeon. Which is why when I taught it's at like CalArts, I would tell the students, are you sure you want to do this? Because yeah. you're putting in so much work that if you were actually to put in less work, you would be a doctor or a lawyer. Yeah. We were honing our skills for 12, at least 12 years did, or more. Yeah. Here's Sometimes a question. How do you guys... Out, I go out at night and I like perform brain surgery on hobos <laughs> <laughs> because I feel like I put in my time as an artist. <laughs> so why not? Really? Everyone needs a hobby. Here, here's a question. How, how do you guys... Our hobby became a job. What do we do? Kill people. Yeah. How, how do you deal with, when you're at a con and, and somebody comes up to you with a portfolio... And you can see in their eyes 
that their entire existence is about, I want to become a comic book artist, and you look at their portfolio, and you're like, you'll never be a comic book artist. <laughs> this is what you say. I really like the paper you used. <laughs> no. The, I, I'm lucky. The people that ever show art to me usually have something going for them. And even if, if you know that, well, not know, but who knows, that they're not, like, right there, that this will immediately be publishable work. My personal point of view is it's not your job to destroy their dream because they could be good one, like really good one day and get that. And I have seen so many people never do in that. the last couple of years, I agree with, with Ben on this one, that just because they're not going to get a job from Marvel or DC at this current point, they may be the next greatest web comic guy to then have their movie option, to then have, you know, uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. If that guy had gone around to Marvel and DC editors, they would have told him he can't draw. It's one of the richest, most successful artists in the last 10 years from his comic story, he would not have gotten hired at Marvel or DC with what he was doing, yeah. and yet he is a bigger success than most of us combined, if you he, want to put it in financial terms. And, and, and that, guy, that guy became rich because of his writing ability. And, and he had, he had well, yeah, I mean, you, you yeah, can... Yeah, I, mean, I don't know, it's just writing. I mean, I think that it's like the, the whole presentation. I think there's something the to be thing. said, but no, I think there's something to be said about that like, naive style, you know. But really, it's the writing. Like, if you had a crappy story, uh, it wouldn't maybe. happen. So really, but, it's ideas. Yeah, it's ideas. We're, just, we're, we're getting down to ideas. It's not just how good you can draw or how good you can write. It's getting those two together with a good idea. Yeah. Wait, it's about comics. It's about collaboration. <laughs> yes, a good writer no, and a good wait. artist. That's yeah. magic. No. It's about drinking. <laughs> and drinking. drinking. No, but it is about the writing time. because you look at Hollywood movies these days, and most of them are out of shit. But they they look beautiful. Well, Battleship no... was good. But yes, Battleship was should be getting an that Oscar. Was, that was awesome. So. <laughs> Are you serious? Re I think Rihanna in that. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. My son wants to see it. I said no. No, it, it was no. good. Did you tell your son? <laughs> so you can make right. movies off board games now. Yeah. It just, yeah, I, I tell my wife, she's like, well, you know, it might be good. It's like, yeah, but... When they make shoots in fucking ladders or fucking Candyland. Sorry. 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 Like, what's that going to be? Aliens come down and want to put everybody in a house on top of a freaking steeple? Like, hey, they, they, like <laughs> at the end, they're like, Sorry. Were they were they carding people when uh, when they started this panel? Yes. Yeah. The bartender. Do you remember when Liam Neeson like gave up acting because he was like, this is frivolous and like insignificant? Now he's making Battleship. <laughs> Hey, he did take, and that erases all sins. Hey, what, was, what was his paycheck for that five minutes of work? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I probably would have done the same Him thing. Him standing there doing this. Fire. Fire. <laughs> it was actually the same shot. Yeah. So long as he doesn't play a cowboy with an American accent, I think we're fine. <laughs> Again. I, I can fault no one for that, having worked on many projects that paid me quite well, that I knew going into it, I don't think this is very good. Yeah, you see, I'm not the boss. There needs to be in Hollywood and in comics and in any other profession, people like us, obviously because we've been drinking, <laughs> who they just call in every now and again and go, is this shit? Yeah. And <laughs> halfway through you go, yeah. You yeah. should hire a completely unbiased a opinion. Yeah, a consultant. Yeah. Consultant, please. We'd be good at that. Like, or, no, don't do that one. Because obviously we're the litmus test of youths 18 to 34. We are. Yeah. We're success stories. So yeah. everything we say forever after is good. Alcoholic consultants. Yes. This doesn't yes. that's a, that's Look, let's form a saying. company. We'll do it. Yes. We'll make millions. We'll just run a Kickstarter for it. Oh, we'll talk. We'll start a Kickstarter right now. Yeah. This doesn't leave the internet, right? <laughs> No, it doesn't. It absolutely doesn't leave the internet. Aaron Campbell, I yeah, hate Battleship and will never work for Hasbro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's too bad. We we're going to hire you for this million dollar job. Granted, you know, like if somebody came and was like, yeah, we'll pay you, we want you to draw we'll the Battleship you, We'll comic, pay you a thousand dollars a page to draw Smurfs comic book. I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> sure. Is there, is there Smurfs comics now again? Because I'm pretty sure there are. IDW don't have the license yet, do they? Because they probably should get that then. <laughs> There's, everything that imaginable has been licensed now, has it not? Yeah. Are they My Little Pony comics again? Yeah, I think so. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing there isn't is Mad Max comics, but they're coming. Yeah. Not from me. Oh. Oh. But they better get me to work on it because I'm Australian. Like Mad Max. <laughs> Just saying. 
So we know George we all love you. We're like, oh. oh. Mm. Well, money still spins the same way. <laughs> is yes, everybody money here, spins the same way. Is everybody here at this panel interested in comics or are most of you just interested in drinking? Yes. yes. Both. Both. Okay. Yes. 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 Ask us more questions about things. Yes. I've yeah. actually got a question. Okay. So the questions get better with the drinking. Seven system. is the answer. Uh, uh, speaking, speaking of lucky breaks, would you mind recounting to us if there was any kind of dead end shit you were doing before you got your your individual lucky breaks? Gardening. <laughs> I know nothing about gardening, but I worked for these two guys from Key West who were very happy. They were awesome. And uh, we just did like installations for rich people, and I was the guy who lifted big rocks. I was, awesome. It was a great job. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll, just move, strain my back. I'll just move the big rock over there. They're like, that looks wonderful. You're great, Shannon. Well, I was, I was, that was a great job. Those guys were awesome. I, I got was paid 30, like $20 an hour. I was 35 before I started freelancing full time. I'm 36 now. <laughs> so that'll but tell you uh, pretty much all you need the to most know. Mo you were a mildly exotic yeah. dancer before that, right? Wow. Well, uh, I'm writing a new comic. It's called Chip Shannon Denton, Dead End Gardener. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be huge. That should be your next heavy metal In uh, <laughs> Hollywood has already optioned it, and they haven't paid you a dime, sir. He just the, Actually, I'll tell you, I, the, the most money I've ever made at a job was at a dead end job. Uh, my father is an electrician. Like, he was an electrician for like, my entire life. Project manager. I got out of undergrad. I moved back to St. Louis for some fucking stupid reason, and and uh, I didn't. I couldn't get any work. I couldn't get any freelance work doing anything, and so my dad was like, "Well, I can get you on, you know, on site on as a, on a white card." And a white card in unions is like basically, like, I'm completely unskilled labor, but I'm gonna like, I guess there's a surplus, like a, like a need for laborers. So like, we'll hire you on. You'll go on. You'll just you know run line and stuff, and we'll pay you as much as any other electrician gets paid. And so for like an entire summer, like I, I was working this hospital, just like running line and getting paid like fifty bucks an hour. I was make, I was like bringing home like a thousand dollars a week after taxes. Like four weeks, I made like seventeen grand. I'm like, I never made that kind of money since. I'm like, man, I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been an electrician. <laughs> I was a janitor, and I also designed Boy Scout badges. And children's school stickers. <laughs> and then I decided to draw people that get eviscerated by vampires. Are Australian Boy Scouts different? Do they have different rules? No, they all get molested. <laughs> <laughs> but, but not the Catholic way. <laughs> the Boy Scout way. There's no neo-Nazism in the Boy Scouts. You Scout get a badge for it. It's just wrong. For that. Over there. I'm sorry, it's retarded that you are asking a follow-up question to, to anything that is being said so far. We would like to apologize let me, let me as a group. Let me just explain to you how stupid that is, but go ahead, sir, with your follow-up question. <laughs> I, we all I, want to work I, again at some point. I did. Well, yeah. No, I, I did the same thing before I was before I worked in comics. I worked at an animation studio in Indianapolis called Perennial Pictures, and we made little uh, half an hour holiday shorts that got aired overseas and went straight to video here in the U.S. And they were terrible, and it was a job, and I got a paycheck every week. And I learned so much working there, uh, not from any attempt to learn anything other than to, uh, enough to keep my job, but just the sheer volume of drawings that you have to make uh, when you are working in animation. Uh, Come answer this, this is that company now. calling him now? <laughs> You signed an NDA in 1992. But, uh, but, but so, I mean, just the, the number of drawings you have to produce uh, just made it, like, I just couldn't help but get better just based on that. So, you know, it was, a, it was an awesome experience 
looking back on it. Now, not, I mean, at the time, it was, I broke the seal. Just it kind of so sucked. <laughs> ah, he's the first. He's the first. Penny beers are over. <laughs> what? He's in the bathroom. Oh. And the children <laughs> leave the room. <laughs> yeah, this this panel is nearly over for me too. So. Oh, bullshit. It is. I'm just saying. I gotta go. You're the linchpin. I have things to do. What you people are interesting. You? What do we do without you? But uh, uh, so yeah. I mean, any any kind of crap job you have, you can you can definitely learn from it. You know, you you just sort of have to figure out a way. You know, figure out what it is that you're you're doing, and 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 you know, yeah. something. Figure out something about it that 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 is a. Or you, you know. learn what you don't want to do. Yeah. yeah. There you go. You learn you well, don't want to farm, or you don't want to carry rocks, or. Because if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. Yes. This is kind yeah. of like old school grandpa advice, but yeah, I mean, some of the shows I've worked on, the guys I worked with ended up being the guys I'm friends with, who were in my wedding, who have gotten me millions of jobs since then, and vice versa. And it may have been the worst, crappiest possible yeah. show that I have ever worked on, and yet it's the one I remember the most fondly I mean, because of the relationships of the people I worked with. So you can take anything you get handed. And you know, at the end of the day, I mean, I got paid to put a cape on Spider-Man. They sent me down to Comic-Con. I did do a panel in San Diego talking about how I put a cape on. I did not want to put a cape on Spider-Man, but I am not, I do not own Spider-Man, but I got paid really well to put a cape on him. All I did was say, can we make it a smaller cape, please? Just a little <laughs> tiny cape. Well, yeah, I mean, our but at the end of the day, I'm getting paid to work on Spider-Man. That in and of itself is cool. I'm very happy about that. I wasn't thrilled it was a cape. To was show that the ultimate Spider-Man. That was, and Andy Kuhn and I now are buddies because of I, ultimate. I drew the the comic adaptation. This is back during the, the era of faxes. Horrible cartoon. For those of you that weren't, it was, it was, and I remember Andy calling me up, going, "What does this guy look like?" Because they won't send me the reference, and I wasn't really technically allowed to talk to Andy because you know it's all tech, it's all NDA stuff. You know, even though he's drawing the comic, they haven't sent him the di designs, and I'm saying. I haven't designed that guy yet, but if I was going to make Craven for this stupid show, which I'm going to have to do tomorrow, he would probably look like this, and I would describe to him what I was going to do, or I would sketch something out and send it to him, and then the next day I would go ahead and tighten up the design, and then they'd officially send it to Andy a month after he had to turn in his drawings for the comic. That's true. That is the genius of middle management. Yes. I love how they fuck everything up. For the yeah. people who actually want to do the work. So they, they are, the this is Marvel against Marvel. I mean, this, is, this made no sense that we couldn't talk to each other because I'm the designer on the show. He needs to have the designs for the comic that they're writing concurrently to come out at the same time as the show airing. But it has to go through this system of Shit. approvals from person to person. Aaron, Aaron, give me a beer. Uh, <laughs> take a, give me a Bud Light and I'll pay you. Doers, yeah. doers. Uh, Corona, Corona, please, I'll pay you. Doers. Too. Doers, Corona? or Crown Royal, so, or booze. booze. Or I'm leaving. Booze Sorry. will work. Sorry, Shannon. Go, continue. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, you know, there's, there's times you work on stuff that you're like, this is not going anywhere, but if you figure out a way to make it work for you, then, you know, you're well, ahead of the game. Real quick, I was going to say, like, um, artistic integrity is nice to have, but that doesn't pay my rent. He is so, absolutely. A lot of times you have to work on stuff you know is complete shit because uh, that guy probably pays within a week, and artistic integrity might not pay ever. If only you worked yes, in sir. France. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> they treat Dapper people differently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's actually a notion they have artistic integrity in France. It's weird. It's like you know, the, the, the only and it's not necessarily a follow-up question. <laughs> when the hell did Spider-Man get a cape? I didn't. I, when like, I don't know if I'm out. When he was gay. It was yeah during the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> was gay, right? <laughs> I think they all are now. Right? Marvel making gay now. Scarlet yeah. Spider, it was yeah. It was. Apparently, okay, here's here's an interesting thing. We were doing basically Spider-Man 2099 as the TV show, but then they found out that they were about to do Batman Beyond over at Warner Brothers. Instead of going, hey, we actually did comics of this and we own. Thank you. I'm doers. Thank you. We actually own Spider-Man 2099. So that's why they At the last that? minute, they freaked out, like, we've got to change everything. And they're like, he'll go to another planet where it's all animal people. Oh. Counter-Earth. Yeah. Uh, character I never designer. Did that story. Storyboard yeah. artist. Oh, okay. So anyway, it was supposed to be Spider-Man 2099, basically. And they freaked out. I did not know that. And then, meanwhile, 
Bruce Tim and the guys over at Warner Brothers are going, let's just do Batman, but with all the Steve Ditko stories with Batman as Spider-Man. Because basically every villain he fought in Batman Beyond were Spider-Man villains retooled. And it was great. Those were awesome. I mean, I love Batman Beyond. That was an awesome show. I think everything's the same price. I don't know if that's why. I mean, they just but 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 we had a cape, and also Spawn was popular at the time, so they wanted this cape really big, and so then I toned the cape down. My son got hooked on that show, and then like I thought like that last episode was going to tie everything together, and it was just another huge cliffhanger. Yes. And I was like, also, Thanos destroyed the universe at the end of Silver Surfer, and we were like four episodes into uh, production on season two. They never aired them, so basically just Thanos won and killed the universe. <laughs> so, so, you know, uh, stuff happens. Kids are, like, messed up now all over America that watched, actually watched that show. Yeah, that was the first thing, he, that's the first experience he ever got of, like, watching a show that got canceled midway through. Yeah. To where it's just, like, watch it. Oh! I worked for, like, 12 years on only season ones. <laughs> that's my career. I got paid well, but, you know, one day, one day... I'll have to work on a season two of something. You realize this is a trend and people should not hire you at the beginning of any show. Yeah, that's basically. This is a known thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, but there's, there's those careers, those the guys that, you know, the French artists that you, you are known for only doing your thing and maybe you did the one thing and you got paid for that, that one time and then there's those of us that are like, I can get it done really well and really fast if that's what you need. But like, here's and, the thing, because I know several people, that, I'm big in France, Oh, the same. Yeah, almost everything I've done has been translated into French, and I I've been to France like a lot of times, and I get to understand the way they do this. I know Jeff Darrow, and he came to my studio. Like, yeah. He used to live. Do you guys know who Jeff Darrow is? By the way, one of the nicest, best artists. Yes, there is. he is. Yeah. And he used to he used to live and work in France. He also used to work at Hanna Barbera, which is where he did. I know he's done him a bunch of stuff. Yes. But he was lamenting the fact that, to me at least, that they don't have. They don't appreciate artistic integrity in this country, that, well, in this Anglo-American industry, the English-speaking yeah. world, that they do in France, where it's like the publisher wants to make sure you are happy more than anything else because the artist or the creator is king, which yeah. is amazing. It's a different mindset that none of us really understand until you go there and experience it. So then he's back here now and kind of... He's, it sounds he's like kind of, It stuff. sounds like a lie to me. No, apparently it's true. <laughs> they are it exists really out there somewhere. There. They don't fuck you up. Look, here's the difference. American comics and, and French comics. If you have a successful comic in France, you die a millionaire. If you have a successful comic in America, who the fuck knows? Yeah. This is Stan Lee. <laughs> and he's not dead, so... Uh, there is a difference in the culture, and it's amazing, the difference. And I'm not saying one's better than the other. They both have merits, but... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you are lovely people, and uh, all my panelists that are with me here... You guys are lovely. I have to go to the bathroom, and, and I'm not coming left. back. <laughs> <laughs> I've enjoyed our little chat. I so. know. Andy's a pussy. It's not alcohol. I am. Andy's got to go to the bathroom. That, that was my mentor. mom calling. Really? Everybody should that like, was Phil calling. Your mother. Andy. <laughs> so. Everybody should cheer Andy as he leaves. Yes. Andy, where, where are you in Artist Alley, Andy? <laughs> Thank you very much. Come see me in Artist Alley, D2. Thank you. <laughs> Andy's show on, on Cartoon Network, by the way, was the number one most watched movie of all time on Cartoon it, Network. It, it was a great movie. It was so, well just lost yes, it was. Fire Breather. It was really smart to put it on Thanksgiving Day when every kid in America is at home going, there's giant monsters. This shit is awesome. <laughs> then why in God's name aren't they making more? Because making more. artists are not in charge of the networks. Let's just yeah. let's do some more studies. Figure out, I don't understand Giant Monsters. Why is this show number one? They got busy doing the same story from Ben 10 over yeah. and over again. Over and over. Hey, nothing against Ben. I like Ben 10. I, ben 10. I, I, have a story that, I have a story that I like to relate about a comic book artist that I met in Phoenix. And it like gave me pause. Like, you know, comics are kind of, you know, it's, 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 this, it's just entertainment, basically. But, like, I met this guy in Phoenix who, like, made me, like, rethink, like, the whole thing, gave me pause for a second. He's this Chinese guy. His name is uh, Da Xiong. It's spelled D-A-X-I-O-N-G. Look him up if you can. He is amazing. I hired him to draw some uh, yeah. uh, top ten for me oh, at wow. Wildstorm. He is a refugee from China, a political refugee from China. Okay, I'm going to back this up because he disappeared on us for three months and doing the artist thing. You're like, what the fuck? 
This guy's been totally reliable. Apparently, the Chinese government put him in jail and beat him for a while because he was a cartoonist, and they for, thought he was yes, for four against months. the government. And he's like, no, I just like superheroes. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, OK, you just yeah. draw superhero comics. We thought he they was were drawing, pro-America he, stuff. For, for a long time, he was American imperialism. Superheroes are bad, man. Yeah, he, he, he was considered China's like premier comic book artist he, up until like he had to flee. Up until and, I got him beaten because I hired yeah. him to draw a top 10. Yeah, well, I mean, he, he drew some book. I don't know what it was that the Chinese government thought was you know, against the party. Wasn't it titled China Go Fuck Yourself? <laughs> China Go Fuck Yourself starring Captain America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they imprisoned him for four months for doing this. And then uh, this human, human rights organization here in America like, helped him defect after he left. His whole family is still over there. All of his property, all of his books, everything still over there. And he is... He does 30 conventions a year right now. That's how he makes his living, selling posters and books. And his story was unbelievable. It was like, wow, like, this is a comic book artist who's like running for his life here because he, he drew comic books. Like, it, 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 oh, you got yeah. Andy Kuhn yeah. who can't even hold his liquor yeah. for like yeah. an hour. Yeah. Or I couldn't work under that pressure. I don't know. Yeah. I need to be in a good place to do my work. So, so yeah. But I mean, it, I, I mean, I, I, I just feel like you know, like it's my obligation. It's not my obligation, but I, I feel like you know, like this is a guy who like he just sits there, he sells his prints, but like he's really like he, he like, belongs on This American Life or something. Like they should do some like, story about this guy. And it, if you ever see him at a convention, like go buy one of his prints, like Da Young, and he has these books. His stuff is beautiful, just absolutely beautiful work. So well, he should do, should now we've, here's the thing, he should do a comic of his life because yeah. some of my favorite people like Joe Sarko with uh, Palestine and all the, yeah. the, 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 the comic journalism. That stuff's awesome. Yeah. He should yeah. do one because he's... But here's the thing. I asked him about that because he, he has this other guy um, who's, who's American but he's Chinese and uh, uh, he's, he's basically like given up his life to, to support him, to be his manager. And he travels with him. He... He takes care of him. He does all of his, his name is Mike. He does, he does all of his you know, travel arrangements. He promotes his work, goes with him to every convention. Uh, because Dejong, like, he, he speaks very, very heavily broken English. So he's got to have a lifeline here. So, and I was asking him about it, and he was like, well, if, he, if he did something like that, he would never in his life be able to go back to China. Like, if, he, if he actually wrote his, his life story, He'd be here the rest of his life, and his family would could possibly like the 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 punishment that they bring down on him. They could bring down on his family. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, good so point. Why, why would he ever go back though? Because to his get family, his family. His family's I know, but, there. I mean, what's waiting for him when he goes back? Man, it's like, hey, welcome back. Ninjas. Yeah. I don't know. It's, family. That was totally racist. I don't know. It's, 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 it's ninjas are from it's Japan, it's, not it's from it's China. Like we all know that. It's just a joke. One, one thing that they were saying, one, one thing that, that, that his manager was saying was that, you know, there's a lot of political upheaval happening in China, and one of the things that they're watching, they're hoping for, is that, that's, you know, that, that hardcore censorship regime sort of starts to slacken. And they're, and they're thinking that that's starting to happen, and if that does happen, he could possibly go, it, it could be possible that he could go back. That, that one. And he could, and he could live, it, it, probably it won't ever happen. No, because you get compliant U.S. companies willing to kowtow to China. Like, yeah. was it Google and yeah. fucking yeah. Twitter or all the, the media companies? So censorship will stay in force because America wants to do business with China yeah. until yeah. that changes. Yeah. Whoa, polit politics. Oh, it got, it got, <laughs> it it got heavy now. in here. That's true. In the modern yeah. world. Like, this is the part of drinking where you're starting to come down. And you're like, oh, so. <laughs> Fuck your dreams. Yeah. <laughs> Idealist. My dreams. It's my dream. It's his dream. Take your hippie love shit elsewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do a comic about that. But if nothing else, it just shows how lucky we are. Extremely yeah. lucky. I mean, this you know, is... That's a, kind of a cliche route to go down, but yeah, we are very is. lucky. And, and, uh, and we also have the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund. Yeah. So. Yeah. If I wanted to, I could make a comic book about President Obama, like, you know, being a pedophile, raping little <laughs> girls, you know. <laughs> I, I could do that. Like, yeah. Is he... Well, on that note, uh, that, that note. What's <laughs> just? Uh, we lost Andy Kuhn already. Uh, uh, we lost 
Do we have any questions? I mean, I feel like you guys have been, you know, it's like, you know, we're, we, we want to answer stuff. Okay, what do we got here? By any chance, did you see the new uh, Ridley Scott movie, Prometheus? No. I want to, very badly. But then I, I saw a that. clip, and they have giant bubbles on their heads. <laughs> and that's silly. I don't want to give so, anything away, but they're fighting Coors Light. <laughs> I've seen the commercials. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Coors Light's going to win, because I love Coors Light. But we're going back to sci-fi design from the, like, the 1970s, right? Yeah. Yeah. If it's not narrated by Morgan Freeman, I don't see it. <laughs> is, is, that their, is, that their, is that their intent? Because they have this giant, yeah. gigantic bubble, and it just like, flops around <laughs> on the top of their heads. And... Right. And there's like the fog yeah. or whatever. Yeah, and I and I saw like the original preview, and I was like, "This looks absolute." I and I at, when I first saw the preview, I didn't know it had anything to do with a, with Alien, and I thought this looks absolutely amazing. Well, I'll, wa I'll watch anything with Stringer Bell in it, so yeah. I'm gonna go see it. Yeah, yeah that's true. Woo! So did you see it? No, I, no spoilers though. I did. It raised more questions than it answered, though. That's good. I like that. And having worked in the movie business, I'd just like to say how impossible it is to be to actually make a movie. So let's let's take the hate level down a notch because I'm just gonna. You know, everybody always likes to be like, oh, that movie was crap. I can't. Do you know how many people work on it? It's like 400 people. You come together. You got three months. Everybody's running around like crazy. You've waited five years to get the green light to actually make the thing, and then you got executives giving you notes as it's getting done. It's amazing. Yeah. Any movie ever gets made. We so need the fact that we need they, Prometheus to do well, even if it's relatively crap, because. Hands up who likes dark science fiction that's actually science fiction. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. Good point. <laughs> How many more films of that do Hollywood need to make? Yeah. A lot. Yeah, and if Prometheus I, does horribly, then it'd be like, okay, no science fiction for the next... People hate years. science fiction. Yeah, it's true. Then we just get Battleship. <laughs> yeah. Battleship. People hate the Navy. <laughs> I hate the Navy. <laughs> you hate the Navy. They got ships. I'm a shipist. <laughs> They've got a new stealth ship that can fire a gauze cannon. Like, <laughs> gauze cannon. Yeah. You know, like, did you say gauze cannon? Yeah, there's a new stealth Navy ship that has a gauze cannon. So is it just like heal wounds? Like, you get shot? Like, it is a gauze right on your arm. It is a, no, it it's a good. Like, it's like Halo. It's a, it's a magnetic gauze rifle that can fire projectile, like, 30 miles. But what the hell is gauze going to do to anything? <laughs> it's just going to heal. It's going to stop me. Damn you, It's going to stop me. It's going to stop me. Band-Aid gun while we're at it. Band-Aid the movie. <laughs> if they can make a movie about Band-Aids, they don't need us anymore. No. It's all over. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's 7.45. Wait, this wow. thing's done. Yeah, the time flew by. I still have some drink. Yeah. Right? yeah all right, question. Oh, we got a I'm question over here. You have not asked right. the question. No, it's... You have mentioned the Silver yeah. Surfer oh. cartoon. Yes. I love that cartoon. What happened? What, what happened? What? What happened it, it is looks, you watched it and 12 of your friends. Okay. <laughs> and, okay, this is the era when the Power Rangers yeah. was on, and they realized, all right, I'll well, Mar the Marvel show was doing okay, but we could put on Power Rangers three times in a row back during the Power Rangers heyday. And to their credit, I mean, business-wise, it made more yeah. sense to just run Power Rangers over and over again because kids would just watch three episodes of Power Rangers in a row more than they wanted to see something from anybody else and that's what happened so basically that was at a point where fox was like well we ran three episodes and it wasn't the greatest ratings ever in the history of ratings so we're just gonna put on more power rangers <laughs> and i was working on power rangers too so it worked out okay for me you know, yeah whatever i'm you know draw silver server draw power rangers has there been an animation property since 1995 that you have not worked on there were three <laughs> three <laughs> what were they uh my little pony <laughs> Coming back to the, no, there's been a few others than that, but uh, I would really. I, Is I, that why I got a second season? I sometimes exactly, exactly. I'm only about number one. It's number ones. I'm like comics guys, you know. I just work on the number ones. They're big hits, and then I move on to other things. Regular show. I wish I'd worked on that. Jason. Yeah, I've got a question. Um, one of you mentioned uh, having the freedom to do sort of controversial topics and things like that. I, I wondered if any of you have experienced uh, negative feedback. Uh, Newsarama, the yes. forums yeah. underneath everything you when do. I When I first started hearing the buzz about the shadow, we're like, oh, Garth Ennis is right in the shadow. What is he going to have the shadow? Like, uh, fuck a child in the ass. And then, like, <laughs> and then, like he's going to tear some woman's head off and, like, spit down their throat. Like, like the most asinine fucking shit. Like, I was like, it's Issue Garth Ennis. Like, he's, he's, he's a really good writer. Like, he knows how to, like, write something. Like, so there's been. And it, 
you know, a couple issues come out, like, oh, okay, like, I guess he's not going to have people, like, ass rape people, but, you know, like, it's like, all goes back to preacher, it's so cynical, right? it's like, if people so, fans are, fans can be so cynical. I don't even know it's fans, it's just those guys that like to post yeah, on yeah. forums, well, because they yeah. don't have to put their face yeah. with their name. I did yeah, a, exactly. I did, so, and, I did a 120 page graphic novel that was a webcomic and then collected a graphic novel about a time traveling Jesus who recruited, <laughs> recruited Columbus and they modified the Santa Maria into a time travel machine and Gary Busey worked on it. <laughs> Gary, Gary Busey, Christopher Columbus, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, Ernest Hemingway. Ernest Hemingway. Why isn't this a movie? Ernest, Ernest Hemingway was a robot, and Albert Einstein was like the what? tactician. And they just traveled. They just traveled their time and like fucked up Vietnam and like, <laughs> up and shit. And so a, pa- a page would post every couple days on the internet, and people were like, "Jesus would never act this way." Jesus. Like, he, I mean, first of all, would he fucking recruit uh, Gary Busey to fuel the fucking Santa Maria that flies through space? Like, shut the fuck up! Like, just, just shut the fuck up! You know? The name, well, I actually drew this, I'm actually defending the whole series, I only drew the second volume. Uh, the first volume, uh, the artist sort of distanced himself from it, because he's really just, um, so I drew, I drew the, but he's way more famous than me. Um, I drew the second volume, it's called Jesus Christ in the Name of the Gun, and then, then volume two is called Temporal Death Punch, that's the one I drew. I have, I have to ask, right, so the first artist, did he distance himself when Gary Busey got involved? <laughs> It was just Jesus in the first one. Jesus and the Hemingway in the first one. Einstein and the rest of them popped up in the second one. So it was Gary Busey. Right. And then the colors, if anyone reads uh, Elephant Men, the colors of Elephant Men draws the third volume. Oh, so that's awesome. Uh, Gabriel Batista. Yeah. 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 He draws the third volume. But, uh, well, that should be fun. a movie. It should be a movie. But they can make Bill and Ted. They can make that. Oh, well, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't The guys that did it, so I won't get any of it. They're, they're, they're making movie. Abraham, they made Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer. <laughs> I mean, Seriously? Yeah. Abraham Lincoln. This Abraham sounds Christ. good. I like the guys that did a Mighty well, Wind I got a, I got a, uh, to do. I'm on DeviantArt, so I got this. a daily deviation, whatever the hell you call it, for the first, for the cover. So it, they just, like, people, like, hundreds of thousands of people see that. Yeah. They wouldn't normally see it. And it's just, yeah. like, you're blasphemous because he's holding a gun. <laughs> and I'm like, someone paid me to draw a cover of him holding a gun. Like, leave me alone. This is not really Jesus. This is my drawing right, of Jesus. This is my drawing. It's like if I drew a Harry Potter comic, which I want to draw a Harry Potter comic if they pay me. But it's the same. It's the same mentality. Like Jesus, like Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. I got bills to pay. Yeah, it's, a fun, it's a fun story. There Jesus no, forgives you. There's no editorial <laughs> interference. Yeah, and he'll just he'll forgive me yeah. when I'm 95, yeah. and I just say I'm sorry. We're and I die. Of, <laughs> <laughs> right. the, the sequel to the sequel to Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer should be like George Washington Werewolf Puncher. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working on that right I'm now. Ideas. <laughs> werewolf, werewolf Country. The werewolf hunter. Yeah, George Washington. Werewolf. My favorite thing having to do with what you were asking, though, is that uh, what was the latest Kevin Smith movie? Maybe it wasn't his latest one. The uh, Strikes Back. Geely. We're at the end in the credits. They're going around. They've got the actual where all those guys post on the forums, and they've got their real names, and they just walk into their house and punch them in the face. <laughs> that was. I mean, you gotta Strikes go, you gotta go out was... of your way to be a dick. Yeah, I mean, I that... bitch about a lot of shit, and I have email yeah. threads with certain friends of mine that are artists where we just bitch nonstop. But I mean, you really got to go out of your way to like. I wouldn't put it in writing to where I'm ruining some guy's career who has to feed his kids (laughs) that I think that he's. You can't. It's the worst too when you're reading like the forums because you shouldn't do it. I just know you shouldn't, but then you do because you're like you read the first two and you're like greatest writer ever. This guy's a genius. I love his stuff. He rapes cows. I'm like what? (laughs) You rape cows? I'm a genius writer and the greatest writer ever. You're forever a cow raper. Yeah. And you're like oh, and you want to read it more to see if they're talking about that. And you're like I should just. Stop ran. This is horrible. I, I, I have feel a, horrible I have a, about myself. I have a Twitter troll that 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 like, you know, trolls me. I don't and have a Twitter troll. What? I don't have one of those. That's cool. Should it's actually you get a Twitter troll. I have Brazilian lady stalkers. I like you know, that. Anyway, like, those Brazilian the ladies. The story goes like a, a few like like a month or so ago, like a, a bunch of comic guys like you know were turned on to this like pir- on. pirating pirating website. Like it was like this. A crazy comprehensive pirating website where you could go on there and he had links for like everything. If you wanted to go that week and get all of the new DC 52 for like, you could go, he had links for everything. You get everything. And it was getting like 
thousands and thousands of hits every week. And so, like, I wasn't the first one to find it. Ron Mars find, found it first. Uh, some, or he didn't find it first, but there were, like, a bunch of people. Ron Mars, Ron Mars is kind of an infamous, infamous Twitter curmudgeon. But, you know, he, he was talking about it, and then I found it. And so, like, you know, a bunch of us were just, like, you know, we were, like, going on about, like, hey, everybody, like, contact DC, contact Marvel, contact Facebook, get this guy shut down. And uh, for some reason, he latched on to me. <laughs> you look weak. And so now, like, you <laughs> looked weak. Yeah. I looked weak. You look soft. That gazelle is the slowest. Like, even, Kurt, even, like, even Kurt, Kurt Busiek, who I've never seen in my life, I've never talked to, he, he, he personally messaged me on Twitter and said, hey, man, I just contacted Marvel. And I was like, Kurt Busiek just, like, contacted me and said he called Marvel and told them about this. So... But so now, now I've got this guy. You know, he 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 chose me of all the other people, and he makes a new profile every day. And, and, and he's I, I know he's Eastern European or something. I, I, I was I, I was actually able to figure out like okay like he 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 always messaged me at this time, so it was like a seven hour difference, which makes him like, you know, like somewhere around here in Europe and and. He could you know, be he, he, like he's he's an absolute. You know, you know, you know, it's like it's like, hey man, where have you been? Like I was just doing your mom last night, and like <laughs> I'm like, that's your like that's your joke. Like you're doing my mom last night. Like welcome to 1985. Like, <laughs> it's from Eastern Europe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's probably wearing like a disco suit. Yeah. So, like, imagine all. Imagine all of the time. Hey, like he's like, doing your mama guy, last you know, night. And, like as soon as he like you know I just go like oh block you know and he's done. And, you know, it like, would be, like, two seconds block. And I was like, you know, any one time, like, when I was still, like, like, slightly, like, interacting with him, I was like, you realize you send me these Twitter posts, nobody else sees them because you're sending them to me. Like, you're only, like, trying to insult me. And, and now I, I get them, like, every day. I'm like, like, a couple days go by, I was like, I wonder where my troll is. Like, oh, there he is. Now, now, you, <laughs> like, now you miss him. Yeah, I'm like, oh, man, I haven't seen my troll for a while. And, like, he shows up and says, oh, like, what kind of mom jokes five. does he have today? Five. <laughs> five minutes to... Five minutes. All right, five down. minutes, guys. Of all those of you that are holding your questions... One more, question, like, one more on. question. One more, like, atomic question. Atomic. Atomic. Nuclear question. You just stumped him. It doesn't have to be nuclear, okay? Now we can take it back it down to just like mediocre. semi-radioactive. Who's the worst like writer, artist, or anyone to work with? They, or they oh. work with <laughs> <laughs> you said it. Shannon Denton. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna throw anybody under the bus. Like, yeah, that yeah, that's. I mean, you know, this goes back to actually something I want to talk about earlier. That the 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 hater thing, I don't get. I've always been sort of more of a. I like this guy, I like this guy. All the guys here, I bought stuff from every single yeah. artist here. I like all of these guys. I, I don't understand why there's not more of a sort yeah. of uh, a brotherhood amongst yeah. us as comic artists, comics yeah. writers. And there's a real... I don't know, I guess maybe it's the thing where, you know, people go on Twitter, people go on yeah. Facebook, people, people like to talk about what they don't like. And people forget to talk about what they do like. And there's so many artists that I meet and yeah. writers that I meet where maybe I didn't necessarily love what they do but I meet them yeah. and I realize how good a person they are and then it makes me more inclined to understand where they're coming from or how their story it gives you a different perspective on what they're doing yeah. so I'll, I'm not looking I'll, at it from like I spent $3.99 this I'll has admit, got to be the greatest thing I ever bought yeah. to where like I think I worked really hard to give this and maybe it wasn't the best thing I ever read yeah. but it was probably could, the best thing he ever right wrote and maybe yeah. next year it'll be better <laughs> I'll, I'll admit, that, I'll admit yeah. that like for, for, for several years I was a huge Rob Liefeld hater I was just going to I was just going to jump in and yeah. say I'm a huge fun. Rob Liefeld supporter Rob no, Liefeld no, gave I, me I, my first job so I I'll admit, like, like for many years, I was a huge Rob Liefeld hater, and I still don't like. I'm still not like a fan. Like, I was, I was an absolute devotee of Rob Liefeld in high school. Like, absolute. Like, if anybody had said anything about Rob Liefeld, it's like you're an idiot. But then, like, I got out of college, and like, then I became like an absolute like hater of Rob Liefeld. But now, but now, like, I, like you know, even though like I don't appreciate his art, he's like, man, he's like, he's just trying to make a living. Like, if I don't like it, what does it matter? You know, like he's like, and and if anything, Rob Liefeld made comics more interesting. Like, you know, his his uh, mark on the comic book world has left up has left up has left up has left us with like these 
stories that we'll never forget. Look at it like this. He gave 30 of us jobs. Sam Liu, he's directing Green Lantern. Chap Yep, he's a background designer on pretty much you know, every animation story you've seen. Uh, Jeff Matsuda worked at Extreme with us. Jeff, you know, uh, Emmy winning you know, producer on the Batman show. So you've got all of these guys that Rob saw talent in, yeah. gave us a shot. We've all gone on to do different things. So they're, they're, I, I like to focus on that side of the industry, not so much the. I, like, I was just oh, saying, I, I own two copies yeah. of X Force number one. There you go. Yeah. I did. Do you remember the X Force crossover with Todd, yeah. where it was the sideways land? Yeah, yeah, the sideways. Yes. yes. It was all this Shit way. I was like, my mind was blown. I was like, what is happening? I turned the comic this way. This is amazing. <laughs> Rob, Rob, <laughs> Rob has fun. He puts everything he's got into it. Whether you, whether you like everything it or don't. Everything is subjective, and like, everyone. There's going to be someone that likes something. So. Yeah, I mean he's not yeah, he's man. not going out like I'm drawing this to piss that guy right there yeah. off. No, I mean that's not he's doing it because he's having fun and that's what he likes to do, yeah. and he's made a living at it. He's actually and made it so that not, he had he's made it so other people yeah, and he's made it so that other of us could have an opportunity to have a living. So yeah. there needs to actually be more of that kind of thinking, yeah. I think, in this industry where we're actually supporting each other. Yeah. You know. Got each other's back. For, for every person that you think is horrible, there's a, a thousand people who love them. So you know, and if if they love them, then it's proven they're, by the they're fact worthwhile. That Rob still gets work. So. Yeah, and if he you don't like their work, just it. don't buy it, but don't go bashing the guy because yeah. you know the, what you're basically doing is yeah. you're like hurting that guy's ability to feed his kids, or you're you know you're, yeah, but you know, I mean, unless that also guy is attacking you, like, right, right, no to a yeah. point, yeah. all right. There's a difference between the person and the work as well. Right. And yeah. those lines blur with far too many people. Yeah. Like, someone's work is their work. Fine, you can judge that, and they yeah. shouldn't take it personally. Right. But then there's so many people that go overboard and say, that's an extension of them, therefore I hate that guy. Fuck that guy. Yeah. That's bullshit. Yeah, you can just, say, you know, if you don't like the person's work, that's one thing. But what would it be the same? All, all the guy's trying person. to do yeah. is pay his mortgage and feed his kids and... Yeah. Yeah. Does not work at like McDonald's or something. You say Fiddle yeah. beat his kids. Yeah. And both. if people, and if people <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you gotta do a little bit of both. So uh, pick up some Dusty Star, pick up some, yeah. uh, you know, whatever we're Ryan's working on web comics, get some of what Ben's working on, Aaron Campbell's doing Shadow. Thank you all we are, very we much. We are all in Artist Alley. Yeah.